Hell yeah. Let's do it. Something from everyone. Episode 47 with Brian. Is it Will? How do you say your last name? Will E. Will, Will e. e. Yeah. That must have been a lifetime. It must still be a lifetime trouble for you. Yeah, yeah. It's a lifetime battle, you know. But I didn't choose it. <laughs> yeah. We're just, you know. I've got the opposite end of that with Jones Tor Grosso, where I have so many letters that it's like, I think it looks how it sounds, but it's so many letters that people just get overwhelmed by. And yeah, someone out. goes, Tor, tor to, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's always that. And yeah. yeah, always a nightmare. The Not whole, so bad. It takes a minute, though. It does. I feel like it's, yeah, it sounds exactly how it's spelled. It's just you see it and you're like, oh, fuck. This yep. is going to be a nightmare to try and get through. <laughs> so you've got the opposite with, yeah, five letters. It looks simple enough, but a little deceiving in the end. It's tricky. Uh, hell yeah, dude. I like to do plugs up top. So instead of doing our social media and all that shit at the end, right up front, I know we have the Lorna shows coming up and then shows in Europe. Is there anything people should know about? Yeah, where should people get tickets? What is happening in the immediate future for Currents? We've got Europe happening. So if you're, uh, of Europe or, you know, you live in the UK or whatever, uh, you can go to that. That's going to be good. It's looking pretty good. UK is looking crazy. Germany's looking crazy. Like sales are going steady. It's nice. That's so, awesome. uh, yeah, make sure you get your tickets sooner than later. Uh, especially, you know, if you're one of those like hot areas, I yep. guess, specifically London, I want to say London. Maybe. That's the one. Yeah. That's the that's one. Cool. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, some of Germany's going crazy too, but um, are yeah. American bands generally good in London because the English like conversion or is London just happened to work for currents? I don't know. I, I we, we've been there like a good bit at this point, but I've heard that the UK in general, um, it's kind of fickle. Like it's kind of like kind of like here or maybe not fickle is the, the word, but like they're more like here than the rest of like. Europe is mm -hmm. they're a little bit more like they need to see you a few times you need to be like uh you know it's you're not always gonna have them but when you have them it's it's cool so yeah. just enjoy the ride yeah. kind of thing so yeah of course hard to speak about a whole country in a, in a sentence but yeah I appreciate that exactly uh, but for me my mom's from South America so we always like the come to Brazil meme is very relevant to me because all my cousins like whenever anything goes to South America they're just gung-ho ready to go they're so eager for it uh, so I'm always curious to see if that yeah does that translate to Europe and Australia and all these other countries or continents I guess rather um, yeah I don't know the, the best thing is like UK feels like here as far as like crowds and, and stuff go yeah. and it's like a similar culture as far as all of that is concerned but like yeah i don't know brazil i it's funny it's a it is a joke but everybody wants to go i yep. don't think anybody doesn't want to go it's yeah. just getting there you know yep uh and then we got the holiday shows with lorna coming up i assume those tickets are still on sale if they're not sold out already yeah that one uh Last I heard, it's getting pretty low. The shows are almost sold out if they're not already. Um, yeah. So that'll be awesome. I have those cities here. It's Worcester, uh, somewhere in New York, somewhere in New Jersey. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Huntington, New York. It's like Long Island um, at Paramount. And then we've got Starlin Ballroom, New Jersey. Uh, it's in Sayreville. But yeah, then Palladium. So those are all going to be sweet. Wrapping off the year at home. Awesome. And my little plug is that I'm booking music videos for 2024. So if anyone's listening and interested in music videos, and let's make that happen. Um, yeah. Diving back into the current stuff. Uh, I guess one thing on the holiday shows. I know you guys have always had the, the local holiday shows. It must be fun to continue that tradition. And now you're continuing it. Yeah. Opening for Lorna, which is like, seems like the biggest version of these holiday shows that it's ever been. Yeah. We get to do something different this year. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be cool. It's really nice to have the opportunity and to be in like the, the position that we are on that yeah. that bill is just crazy. So really grateful for that. Um, it's going to be a good opportunity for us. So we're really looking forward to it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Before we dive into all the, the exciting current time, current stuff happening currently, uh, I want to go back to the old days. Yeah. Back where the thing all starts for you. So is vocals the first thing I was telling you before we got started that I found some vocal covers from 2010 back with uh, Divide the Universe, which I learned was Justin Leach was involved. I didn't know he was musically oh, involved. Oh man. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm Shout sure, out yeah, Justin. I'm sure local bands have their pros and cons, but yeah. Do you, is vocals the first thing you learned? Where does this journey kind of start for you? So my journey started, that was a little bit, that was the beginning, but I had been doing vocals for a while before <laughs> that. It was uh, something that just always fascinated me and I wanted to learn more about it. But um, I think I started when I was probably just getting into like, like metalcore and stuff like that. I was big on like, uh, <laughs> like still remains, like haste the day, all that remains. Yep. Um, just uh, Lamb of God, like, you know, bands like that. And I was always fascinated with how they, like, did vocals. Bullfront of Valentine is another one. Uh, and they're all, like, kind of, like, different vocal styles, mm -hmm. right? But um, 
was music like in your house? Was this like a was dad listening to Metallica, so it was easier for you to get into this, or were you kind of a black sheep going into yeah, something no, that was foreign? My parents loved music. They loved like uh, my dad likes like old school like rock. Um, my mom was more. I guess she liked a lot of stuff. She liked like dance music. She was a dance instructor like mm -hmm. before she had us, um, like me and my sister. And we had music in the house all the time. Yeah. So it was a lot of like she she liked like rock too, but she she liked like shock rock. She liked like uh Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, uh she liked Aerosmith, she liked Motley Crue, she liked uh, Metallica, she liked Pantera, she liked everything, you know, like she mm -hmm. was all about it. And uh, she had a really cool, like, wide music taste. Uh, she liked a lot of the classics. We had the bangers, you know, all in the all house the, yeah, all yeah. the time. We're always listening to them. Uh, we'd have, like, dance parties upstairs and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we were, like, little kids, we'd go up in, like, the big master bedroom and go, like, dance to, like, whatever was, you know, going on. I just stumbled across some home videos about dancing to NSYNC back in the day. So oh, maybe yeah. A little had bit to be some NSYNC. Music, had but... to be some NSYNC, some Usher, some Nelly. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, she'd throw on, like, uh, whatever, like, Guns N' Roses. Yep. She'd throw on, like whatever you know yeah, and yeah. Uh, so so music was always around um and it was just always a thing that i liked I found like lincoln park i, I started finding mm -hmm. like my own stuff that i liked aside from like what we all enjoyed and and then added that in mm -hmm. kind of so yeah music was always like a thing growing up learning how to scream was kind of just like a, an elevation of like i wanted to learn more about it i always wanted to be in a band and i felt like if i could figure it out that maybe that could be like the way in, you know, you're a kid and trying to figure things out and like find your place. And was so it just like the most accessible because you don't need to go buy a guitar or buy a drum kit or was there, re yeah, was it the lyrics that were super interesting? Like, I feel like I always hear music through lyrics. So that would, if I were to get into music, that would be, I think the way that I would go because I don't hear drums. I don't hear guitar in that same sense was, yeah, vocals kind of your calling or did you go through guitar, bass, drums and end up on vocals? Yeah, so my family was into music, but nobody was a musician really. Mm -hmm. I I had gotten like a guitar when I was young, but then, you know, just never really enjoyed it. We never got lessons, uh, things like that. We got a drum kit, didn't really like drums very much. Um, never had a piano in the house, but I, I started to explore that later on, kind of like as a, as a thing to just try to learn more and... and you know, expand the horizons and, and have an instrument of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, vocals, um, singing a bit, but mostly I like when I thought of Lincoln Park, I wanted to be like Mike. Like yeah. I thought he was like the coolest. And, uh, you know, I just the way that he would like hype people up on stage. I didn't necessarily know if I wanted to like, you know, be like spinning bars or anything <laughs> like that. But <laughs> what yeah, a different once, path that could have been. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like, I loved the, the hype of, like, you know, how, how Mike would get people going. And I loved, like, the, the emotion that Chester would bring into his vocals. Mm -hmm. um, so just that kind of mix, that that seeing them as, like, that duo sort of thing, but mm -hmm. wanting to kind of have both. And, you know, it was, like, trying to figure out vocals. I think All That Remains was the big one for me. Just as, like, Randy Blythe, Lamb of God, of course, but... Um, the way that Phil, when I heard like the fall of ideals and, and mm -hmm. things that were on that record where he would be doing lows and he'd be doing like, I like literal gutturals. He would be doing highs. I love death metal at the time too. I was just getting into death metal. So I was like, Oh man, it's crazy. And then he would be singing on songs. And mm -hmm. I was like, this, this guy's so good at everything. But if he's so good at everything and then he has to play live, like he has, there has mm -hmm. to be like a way there has to be a way. Mm -hmm. And that was like the kind of like the, the watershed impetus. moment yeah. for me where I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. I go to you know, YouTube videos. Um, everybody's trying to tell you how to do fry. It's like yep. all the opposing information. It's like, Oh, drink milk before you, <laughs> you scream. Oh, so many. I remember putting a pencil in my mouth and you're like, bite it in your molars or something. Yeah. But you didn't understand what you were supposed no to be idea. getting out yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, or like, Oh, drink orange juice or whatever. Just yep. like stupid crap and it's like then, early high school late middle school like right when you're at that perfect age to be trying all the crazy crap like elementary school oh I even earlier say. yeah Hell i was okay. like i was probably in like the fifth or sixth grade oh, when wild. i when i when i first got interested yeah um i was absolutely just like reprehensibly black, like bad until mm -hmm. Probably the eighth grade when I started filming myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you mentioned vocal covers. Yep. If you are like 
watching this or you're listening or anything and you go to YouTube or you go to wherever and you try to find these, <laughs> there are older ones than that too okay. that I have somewhere. I have to yep. find them. Um, I've got so, some too. Yeah. I, yeah. in my learning music process, yeah, I guess my, my quick summary of getting into camera stuff is that I film myself playing guitar covers and quickly realize that I like filming the covers and editing the covers, but learning the song is a hassle. And like, it was this thing of like, I do four months of work of learning a song that I was bad at and took forever just to have one good night of filming the video. And it was like, I think I could probably outsource this, but for sure, some of those are also on YouTube and sounds like a similar thing where there's some mm -hmm. that are out there and then there's some even before that where I kind of had to draw the line of like, I think it's. I think it's worth showing some of our imperfect beginnings, right? I think to some degree, part of why I like seeing you in 2011 is it's this like humanizing realization of like, oh yeah, that is going to Australia starts here. It starts with yelling in your friend's bedroom and you just keep doing that. And eventually that thing grows into something. And yeah, for me, it's like, I don't want to get rid of all that old crap and pretend that I never went through that phase, but you do have to draw a line in the sand somewhere of like eh, everything before this doesn't have to exist. <laughs> yeah, there's things where you're like, all right, that doesn't have to exist. But you'll look at you'll look back at it. And as long as it was like the truth, you know, mm -hmm. and it was something that you can stand behind now or at least yeah. you can like stand understand. The effort of yeah, you can stand behind the effort and you can stand behind like what you were doing at that time and what mm -hmm. that was, what that step was in your development. Then like. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And yeah. like, it's like when you see a photo of yourself right after it's taken and you're like, Oh God, get it away from me. And then yeah. you look back like five years later and you're like, Oh my God, I looked so like, I looked so, I was so much skinnier back then. Or, mm -hmm. Oh man, I liked how this was like, Oh, like this thing hadn't happened yet. The like this, this place, dude doesn't yeah. have any idea what's about, you know, yep. like, yep. like good or bad, like good or bad. Yep. But, yeah, I'm really bad at that. I'm really bad at taking photos of my friends, and it's almost ironic that I feel like I have my whole life documented through places I took photos of, but I'm not in any of the photos. It's just this collection of places I've been and things I've done. And yeah, I think you're right that sometimes I'd, I'd be better served to get in the photo and just accept that, like, I don't necessarily want to be in this, but it'll be worth something five, ten years from now. At whatever happens, whatever moment in life will be, yeah, it'll be worth more. Um, mm -hmm. And I think I've had some value of, like, the podcast is some version of that with me and my friends of, like, yeah, there are people on here, and I most people on here I still talk to, like, they're still good friends of mine, but, like, there will be someone on here who this is the last time I speak to them. And that's a sad truth to me, or maybe not the last, but one of the final, whatever. And in 10, 20 years from now, when I'm looking back on life, it's like, oh, yeah, here's our little our moment in time reserved together. And there's been something, yeah, very satisfying about that as I go through. Yeah, to your same point of, uh, yeah, it's kind of keeping this journey alive, of recognizing that it's a a living thing that it's not always perfect now, but it has value in the future also. Yeah. It's like, it's not so much the thing. It's like the things that are attached to that thing. It's yeah. the moments, it's the memories. It's the, like you see a photo and you're like, Oh man, that thing that happened that day. Yep. Like I remember this. And it's like, that's the stuff that really brings joy. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm sure that as you've kind of grown through this process that I guess I'm jumping ahead here, but one of my uh, thoughts here is trying to find like joy in what you've done. So as you're kind of alluding that, yeah, you have taken a bunch of photos in a bunch of places, right? You've had the, the luxury and the pleasure and the privilege and you know, you've earned the treat of going to a bunch of different places and seeing the world. Uh, and I guess in my in my own little bubble, it feels hard to be present sometimes, right? As I'm traveling, I was in Maine this weekend filming and there was a, a moment in my weekend where it was like, I want to be home, dude. <laughs> and then the, the next thought is like, no, imagine when I was 16 and just learning this, like how grateful and how beautiful it would have been to have someone invite me out of state to come film this thing. Like, that's crazy. And I'm sure in, in your travels or similar moments of like, fuck, I want to be home, but also like, damn, this is incredible that I'm here. Like, how do you balance those two, those two challenges? It's all about the adjustment. You, yeah. uh, like I, we, we started talking about it a little bit before we hit record, but mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, the adjustment going into like a tour and then the adjustment of leaving one and going back home yeah. is that that's the toughest part of all of it. Once you get past that kind of uh, I mean, yeah, there's the main the the maintenance of like home and, and stuff like that where, you know, that that part gets frustrating or it gets it gets challenging mm -hmm. is probably a better word because, you you, you know, you want to do it. You want to like. Of course, keep up with life. It doesn't stop when you're not yeah. there. So it's like that. That is a challenge. I'm sure the itself. challenge is that everyone else's life keeps going, right? It must feel like your life pauses. Or when I tour, that's always what it felt like is that I removed myself from a timeline and my timeline paused and everyone else kept living past me. And mm. then you come home and it's about playing catch up on these. Yeah. However X amount of right. time you missed. Well, your timeline moves forward in the thing that you're doing. Like when we're, when I'm like on tour, I'm like full, like I'm full like there, like I want to be full on. It's like, yeah, I spent a lot of time like on the phone with like family and like my girlfriend and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But when we're there, like everything that I'm doing is in service of the thing that we're 
mm-hmm. there to do. Yeah. Like we're there to play a show. Everything that I'm doing in the day, whether it's sleeping really late or like eating this thing or, mm-hmm. um, you know, having like whatever steps you're going to take before you play. It's all in service of performing and getting the most out of like seeing everybody, making friends, like um, building on those relationships. And that's something I've learned a lot more later is is just trying to spend as much time with the people that you're around as you possibly can and just take all of that in and make those memories. Because at the end of the day, I'll look at a photo of a show that we played and I couldn't really tell you where it is. I couldn't tell you what's going on in my head in that moment, uh, unless it's something that's like really specific. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that will all kind of blend in, but it's yeah. like the little candid stuff. That's the little things that you remember the photo, fo- the dumb photo you took on your phone of mm-hmm. this like shot moment that happened where something broke or, yeah. um, you know, your, your tire popped Got or lost whatever. somewhere. Yeah. Stuck somewhere, stranded somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All these crazy things that can happen. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've always like, do you find yourself having to intentionally be present? Like I, I think part of my challenge then is it's like to some degree I want, uh, you're right. Everything is in service of this goal. And I think when you're on tour and you're traveling it, I don't know, to me it goes to the sports analogy of if, if I, yeah, if I want to have a good football game on Sunday, like that starts on Tuesday with practice and sleep and food and all the things mm-hmm. you went through and it kind of builds along the way. Uh, and those things to me almost seem like contrary to enjoying the process. Like it seems like if you were to do Europe perfectly, you would get to bed super early, you would eat great, you would do almost nothing fun, you would omit all these memories that you should have been making or could have been making. Um, But of course, yeah, if you don't make those memories, then tour becomes unsustainable and unfulfilling for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, how are you trying to balance these two things of enjoying the moment, but also being responsible in the moment? And I guess, yeah. I guess it's it all it all goes back to the adjustment. I yeah. spend the beginning, I want to say the first two and a half weeks, and a tour typically is anywhere from like four to six weeks, mm-hmm. right? Those first two weeks, or it's maybe a percentage of the amount of total time spent out. Yep. Like if you have of the tour. three to five days, your adjustment is going to be a little shorter, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, or maybe you just don't adjust at all. But when you have that that four to six week banger, you know, mm-hmm. you are uh, I'm spending those first two weeks doing everything right, or at least trying to do everything yep. right. Sleeping as much as possible, drinking way more water than I probably will the rest of the time, um, trying to just like get the the body going that's probably when i'm more likely to be like doing gym related things mm-hmm. um keep up with chris <laughs> oh my god yeah I'll keep up with all of them keep all up of with them. all of them yeah i'm the one i'm the one that that usually just stays in the van when they hit the planet fitness but uh <laughs> you know those first those first two weeks like i'm more likely to go in than the rest of it by the time i get past that threshold of um i need to not talk to anybody mm-hmm. i need to like hydrate i need yeah. to like because that's the roughest on your body like yep. the, the long stretches yeah they, they it like bends you up a little bit but the that time where you're not you you're kind of just like oh my god i was just on the couch with my cats yeah um watching the boys <laughs> or like every day yep. for like this whole time because i'm trying to make up for the lost time at home and then you get pulled away and you're like you're back at it and that's the hardest once you hit that threshold of oh i am locked in Mm -hmm. i have done everything i need to do i i am confident i'm like loose my voice feels good i can talk to people i'm not like strained i'm not like overtired i'm not this i'm not that um that's when i'm like okay now i need to just full in like make those memories i need to talk to people i need to open up and i need to like uh get to know everybody a little better and 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 just and and the people that i do know i want to see them i want to hang out so and that's all stuff that like later on you learn and and you try to um make those things happen because you kind of have the experience of knowing if that adjustment period is let's say yeah two weeks let's say call it i don't know first quarter of a tour has that adjustment period gotten longer or shorter as you've gone on like it was your first tour yet six days before you acclimated or was it four weeks and I've slowly figured out how to acclimate quicker? Depends on like how the mental is. I feel like, yeah. cause like that, that will fluctuate. So like, yeah. uh, if the mental is bad or there's like some kind of health, like BS going mm-hmm. on. It's going to be a little longer, but if we're like steady touring, like through the year, like it's been, um, 
this year or how it's been, I want to say like 2018 or I think it was 2018. Mm -hmm. That was an insane year. Um, from 28, like 2017's end to like 2018, up until like COVID, we were just doing, we were just constantly on tour. We were like just oiled. I was like the healthiest that I had ever really been at that point. Uh, mentally, I was at the like probably firing the the best mm -hmm. that I that I could have been at, yeah. at, at that time. And there was there was just a lot of good happening. We were just out constantly. It was fresher. It was like crazy. It was like accelerating, and it yeah. still is. But um, I guess at that time, like the adjustment was just not really a thing. I just go walk up on stage and just be like, yep, whatever, <laughs> like. <laughs> make it happen figure it out yeah. yeah i can still do that i can still do that sometimes i can still yeah. hop up on stage without like crazy warm-up whatever mm -hmm. but like uh yeah now now i think that uh covid made everybody like i mean some people some people went like a different route but kind of messed mm -hmm. with me a little bit so yeah. then uh like it's been a little bit more of an uphill battle mm -hmm. since then but i'm i'm in a really good spot now i feel like oh yeah uh, um, I appreciate you being open about that. And I, I think it's, you're wise to admit that the booking agent's <laughs> schedule and your mental health schedule don't always align perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's been two years, come on, course. but you know, it's not really an excuse yeah. anymore, but no, I think you're right. And I think, yeah, I'm glad, glad you brought that up because it kind of ties us in as a perfect segue to one of my little points here is that, yeah, the, the, not the place I feel safest, the way it ends comes out right in June, 2020, mm -hmm. uh, which is right at the start of the pandemic. And my, the pandemic was very hard for me as well. And my first year being fully self-employed is 2020. In January 2020 is when I put my foot down and go, I'm leaving work full time. I'm going to do this full time. I'm going to give it an honest go. Uh, and the universe had other plans. That me. is and, awesome. Yes, that it was is a awesome. great time. And uh, I guess my silver lining there has been like, I survived it. And it took a little government assistance. And it took a little day jobs here and there. But I survived the bulk of it. And if I can weather that storm as a business, then I will take my odds against most storms. Mm -hmm. The flip side there is like, yeah, it did suck. It, it caused a lot of problems for me. And it, like personally, mentally, like a lot of challenges came up there. And I think one way I've tried to cope with that is by finding things that didn't completely erode and die in the pandemic in those years. Uh, and so the example I always give is that one of my friends works, uh, lives in the Boston area, and he started a business installing like home computing setups because everyone was moving home. Everyone's uh, academic, everyone's kids were coming home to school. So he developed, started a business installing academic setups, installing desks, hardware, like all the computer shit, and made a killing, like made a like made a, a huge nest egg for him to basically live off of the rest of his life to some degree nice. just by doing this. And like, that's not everyone. It's not most people, right? The pandemic was by and large difficult for people. Um, I think the reason I bring this up here is that with the album coming out in 2020, uh, I think one of the other things I've heard is that 2020, because everyone's home, becomes a, a great time to put out content in hindsight. At the time when the record is coming out, I'm sure the narrative was like, we can't tour on it. Like, what are we going to do? And I think what I've heard since then is like, everyone was home, so everyone consumed everything. Like, in hindsight now, does it feel like the record came out at a good time because everyone was home to consume it? Or do you wish it had been a more normal rollout process of being able to tour on it and do the the, yeah, the normal things that a record rollout in Dables? We will never know. Yeah. So... It's just one of those times where you have to be happy with how it went. Yeah. We put it out. We had singles out. I mean, I've told this story before, but we've, we had suggestions, not necessarily strong ones, mm -hmm. but the, the conversation was brought up. Um, hey, do we, do we wait a little bit? Do we wait a little bit yeah. to put this out? And do we just try to, put it out at a time where it seems more likely that we'll be able to capitalize on it by hitting the road and, and going yeah. to these places and pushing it, trying to get those first week numbers and whatever. Mm -hmm. But like I said, we already had singles out. It was one of those situations where we didn't want to disappoint people because it was already such a publicly put out there thing. Yeah. We had the release date already. There was stuff on the pipeline that we had, we, we had worked on mm -hmm. We couldn't really do music videos in the way that we wanted to. That's probably the biggest bummer. But the stuff that we did get to do, I think, was solid. Mm -hmm. And we put it out, and it was good for us. I think that 2020 was a good year for Currents. The lack of touring 
wasn't the worst thing. You get to see what life is like without it for a little bit. Yeah. You kind of get to just, I got to just be like a person. That's interesting. That again, if, if 2018 and 2019 was, I thought the touring had really picked up since then. And if 2018 and 2019 was as busy as it's ever been, then it, yeah, it's a really interesting time to be able to kind of catch your breath after that. And the more normal follow up to that would have been to keep increasing that workload. And so, yeah, to yeah. Be able to take a deep breath after that must have been a, a luxury. And of course, luxury with some other challenges, but yeah, luxury in yeah, some ways. Got a little rusty, got yeah. a little lazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that we've, we've bounced back, mm -hmm. put in a lot of work to try to be better. And to try to, because when I, those first shows post COVID, when we were back, I was struggling. I bet. Like it was, it was something I, anybody that was there, sorry, <laughs> but I was struggling. I'm way better now. So, uh, yeah, but it was, it was nice to come back and then just be met again with, oh, this is the thing and it's grown and it's yeah. It's maintained course throughout this time. And it was, you know, partly because we just chose to to go forward and just release it when we did and just stay the course. And it did end up working in our favor because that still is, is I would say, probably the most popular record at this point. Um, at least by like stream numbers. And, yeah. yeah, numerically it is it is the most well well received record at this point but that's yeah it all works out it all works out somehow that's interesting yeah and i haven't i hadn't realized there hadn't considered there would have been a conversation of delaying the record and of course everything at that time was like do we wait for this thing what is this thing in six months is it gonna be gone like yeah what are we doing uh and i think it's yeah how sad it must be for so many bands who must have held the record right if that conversation happened for you i'm sure there were other camps that did make that call and you must have been stuck, yeah, just waiting behind the eight ball in that. Like, it seems like getting the record out was such an enormous gossip and such a brilliant decision that wasn't quite appreciated at the time. And at the time, probably was kind of tense of a decision. And if, like, someone was unsure of it, and in hindsight, it's like, man, thank goodness that thing did come out. Because if it hadn't come out then, when would it have come out? And how long does that back up everything else? And, yeah, I know bands are always on the next record. So how long mm -hmm. would that next record have taken if this one gets delayed? Oh, yeah. Like, imagine you put it out and, like... I don't know. The, the people always make the joke like you you put out the record and then you hate all the songs by of the course. time other people <laughs> yeah. hear them. Yep. I don't really feel that. You get reinvigorated and mm -hmm. you you know you get excited again because you're actually getting to like you know own it and and do the thing and, and yeah. perform the songs. And yeah, I get I get that idea. Is like you look at it later and it's the same thing with the photo you go oh mm -hmm. my god i can't believe i did this oh yeah. my god i can't believe my voice sounded like that oh why i could have done this better or that better but yep. i don't really do that i don't like to like beat the stuff up i just don't really listen to the songs unless i have to <laughs> after a certain <laughs> yeah. period of time so yeah. that i can just continue to like them and then i'll go back later and i'll, I'll try to pull out like what i like about Mm -hmm. them like that's where i'm at with like place i feel safest and like i let the devil in and stuff like that it's like I, I like to like go back and i'll listen to those especially when we're like trying to write new stuff and i'll just be like oh what was cool here like what did, what actually like worked what did i like and yep. um what what went off and i've had a similar like moment with music videos and it seems like a moment of growth for me to be able to look back at my own work for inspiration it sounds like you're doing that with these albums with the devil let the devil in it i guess it's an ep but as you're looking back at the old older records it's like it's cool to be able to draw inspiration from our past selves of ideas that didn't quite mature at the time where you go back and you hear an idea and it's like, oh, if I did that now, I could extend it in this way. And it's, it's been really fun for me to be able to draw inspiration from myself, instead, or not just instead of, but in, in addition to looking from other places and other people as well. Mm -hmm. Or saying like how far you've come. That's yeah, another absolutely. big thing I take out of it. Cause like, you know, if you talk to any of us privately, like we'll tell you how we feel about like whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but like, yeah, I, I like... You go in and you go, oh, this was cool. This was not so cool. Mm -hmm. This is just, ah. and Everything, then like, yeah. <laughs> yep. you're just like, oh God, <laughs> why did that? Why did that happen? And then there's, yeah, there's the times where you're like, oh, this was good. But then I like to think about it like, okay, we, we sat through that. We listened to that. Let's go to the next thing. What changed? What did we, how did it accelerate? Mm -hmm. And then how did it, and then you, you come to like where you are now and you're like, oh, okay. I, there's a, you just getting familiar with the narrative and trying to think of how other people see it and perceive it and, and what's true to how you want it to move going forward. Mm -hmm. Things like that. 
Is the the next Currents record scarier to release than the first one? I guess as I was looking back here, so I know you joined Currents right as the, the place I feel safest is kind of coming together and the years before it. So there's the Withered, the single, uh, and sometime between the single, there's a signing or the record label and then the album comes out. Uh, that album to me seems like the scariest one because it's the first time that you're forced to uh, not forced that you're on this big stage that now someone is expecting something from you instead of just kind of the Connecticut scene kind of embracing you guys now you're on a, a national stage where yeah it's hit or miss no one's really you know uh, be gentle with you anymore uh, whereas now it seems like there would be a different kind of pressure to release the next record because there is some success there is a sound that we want from currents and I assume as you're saying that you kind of build the narrative through the albums there is a, a step that feels natural and a step that feels ambitious and it's like how do you balance the the trajectory of what we have and i guess yeah my my long-winded question here is yeah is it scarier now to release this album or is it scarier with the first record as you're first entering the world it's hard to think about it because it's hard to remember exactly how i was feeling at the time when i i take it well yeah we'll use the place i feel safest right mm -hmm. so when we were doing that we were you know these fresh signees to sharp tone and that was a fresh label. Mm -hmm. uh, still is, in my opinion. Yeah. Still keeping it fresh, you know. But um, they, we had no idea. We had no idea what we were walking into. We had basically signed the deal on, like, just people talking. And we, we had signed the deal on, it was good. It was really good for us at the time. And we knew the people involved, mm -hmm. but we didn't know exactly their plan yep. we just knew hey these are the people trust us like we we had a, a pretty big vouch yeah they're reputable they're worth following but we Sean don't Keith quite know is a legendary guy yeah um and his reputation basically had it to the point where we were like we're we're in we're in we'll we don't we don't need to know who else is on the label we don't need to know anything um He's going to take care of us. He's he's the guy. Yeah. He's he's going to be he's going to be really helpful to us and and we can have like a really good relationship. And that was the case. Like we met him and he was like you guys are in, so right? And we're like yes. And he goes, "Okay, so here's the plan." And lists off all the bands that he has gotten on the label, um tells us all of like his whatever, like his rollout and we're just like, "Oh my god, this is crazy." <laughs> so it really felt like we had kind of like we were there. We were where mm -hmm. we needed to be. And we had already had the music pretty much ready, ready to rock. We yeah. had um, Andrew Wade. Uh, we had time with him where we were going to go and we were going to make this record. Mm -hmm. And that was it was a lot of fun because we got to do like the real band thing. Right. We got to yeah. go to the studio. We got we were in good hands. We were in good hands. Mm -hmm. Um pretty much the entire time uh, from, you know, meeting Scott, our manager, uh, meeting Sean, meeting our team as, as they kind of like came in. Mm -hmm. As the Avengers assembled. <laughs> as the Avengers assembled, as yeah. the, the Avengers current team assembled. <laughs> Hell yeah. And that is really what it is. But we had all, like we had our entire lives to write that record, mm -hmm. you know, or at least me for lyrics and vocals. And I, I had my entire life to plan that thing out and <laughs> how, how I wanted it to go and, and what I was going to say and what I was going to sure. talk about and all of that. And so it was, and it was also like, if this doesn't work out, like we were pretty realistic about it. It was like, we're going to do whatever we're going to do. We're going to take whatever opportunities we're going to take. It was like I was pretty new to the band. This was mm -hmm. all happening really fast. Yeah. And <laughs> there was a lot of like, I was ready. I was ready for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. I was so ready for it. And so that felt really good. There was some like when it came out, that was a really weird time in my life and just in the career of the band. Mm -hmm. We, we basically went to the studio. We dropped like, we dropped all the time, like putting it together. Yeah. And then there was a period where we didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And then it finally came out. Maybe a year later, people start talking about it. The rest kind of like moves on from there and it just yep. snowballs. Yeah. These records get progressively scarier to release because, or even to like work on and touch and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. because 
there are so many more people. There are so many more eyes on it. There was yeah. way less eyes. There was a there was a group of people that believed in us. Ground floor on the band, first record. Yeah. People like invested in the band, people that were like rooting for the band. But right now there are so many more eyes. The of course, yeah. The scale, the scope of it is just so much more vast that um you know, we're not the biggest band in the world well, by I, any stretch of the imagination, yeah. but just to think of where it was, to where it's been, to and what it's become, it's like there is a lot of pressure, but it's also, again, I, I just want to be to that spot where I feel like that same kid yeah. that's just ready to go for it and is just ready for that opportunity, and we're getting there. I think the other avenue of the pressure is, and I'm hearing you talk about the pressure from you know the Twitter followers or whatever, I think uh, my first thought there was like, I think that uh, it's, it's uh, counterintuitive to me because in my from an outsider as a fan of bands i would assume that like once a band has an audience they can put out whatever they want and the audience loves them enough that they will love the thing if the band also loves the thing which i recognize isn't the truth right the, the comments aren't always as kind and supportive as a lot of people in person might be um but i think what you're also saying is not just that pressure but the pressure of like you do have an avenger squad you do have sarah traveling with you like there are other people and it's not just about so appreciate entertaining the fans and the people who are supporting your art. It's you have mouths to feed quite literally. Like there are people who are depending on currents to, for success and to some degree that now the record is not just about impressing Brian. It's not just about having fun on show. It's about making sure that everyone else could keep living and eating and feeding their families. And yeah, that has to be a much different pressure than any of the other ones that have come before. And yeah, when the place I feel safe is coming together, it's like, that's not at all on your brain of yeah. feeding someone. Ah, Sarah will be fine. Sarah, <laughs> she's crushing it. Sarah, she's crushing Sarah it. Sarah is a stone cold killer. She will be. <laughs> she will be fine. Of course. But um, yeah. She's shout out Sarah. She's absolutely. The, she's the greatest. Yes. Sarah Holic photo. Awesome. But um, she's been here. I don't know. Episode maybe thirty something. If I had to Sarah guess, Sarah was on the spot. She was here. Oh man, I she was go here watch. at some point. Yeah, I I should know the numbers better. But yeah, she was here. Shout out her. She's killing with boundaries currently. Always doing something. I guess. Yeah. yeah. If your touring schedule is this much that hers somehow fits another touring schedule in between it so yeah keeps going. yeah it's funny it's like yeah that's that's where it's all at right now is like she's you know growing in her career and mm -hmm. stuff like that so you know we're all just riding the wave yeah you know it's like we're gonna spend as much time together as we can you know absolutely but um yeah she's the homie shout out sarah so i guess that tangent absolutely by the way. <laughs> but, please um, all tangents yeah, are welcome so yeah so we <sighs> Yeah, the the mouths to feed thing. It's like, yeah, how do you how do you grapple that with also not being safe or yep. being fake or letting other hands in the pot to try to like mm -hmm. bring something out of it that's like different or new or something, yeah. but maybe it's not something that you actually want there. And I think we've like learned our lesson as far as stuff like that goes where just seeing it happen with other bands or like, you know, having just like s similar situations, but not on the same scale. It's mm -hmm. like, um, yeah. How do you, how do you get in there and like do something that's just honest, raw, real, yeah. uh, with that pressure and not try to like, just play scared. Yeah. But I don't know. It's, it all, it all comes out in the wash. Like you find the things that inspire you and you find the things that you want to write about and you kind of just have to not care. Yeah. And like you said, it's a new problem to currents, but it's not new in the context of the universe. I'm sure you've toured with people who have gone through similar things of, uh, yeah, I'm drawing up maybe the Polaris at some point, I'm sure has gone through a similar thing and maybe on tour, you're able to sit down with them and say, Hey, how did you <laughs> navigate these waters? Mm -hmm. Uh, my, my question here is I've, uh, had mixed feelings about meeting my heroes and I'm not asking you to say any names or include anything there. Um, but just this idea of like, the, the, oftentimes I've met them and I've been impressed and it's like, wow, it's a cool thing. But a lot of times when I meet them, whether it's good or bad, they become human in a way that makes the art less exciting to me. Like somehow there's a, a beauty in letting them be superheroes in my brain. And as they become human, they become fallible. And that makes this thing messy to me Has being able to tour. I assume you've had the privilege of meeting people you've looked up to meeting some of the bands you grew up listening to. Like, has it changed the way you can interface with music? Has it changed how much you appreciate what you're doing? Or has the, have you been able to kind of like separate the, the jerks from the good experiences? Yeah, totally. I think that the way that I interface with at least the style of music is, is way different. 
I have things that I like. I have things I don't like. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm seeing a lot of these bands now, maybe not as peers because they are still like, you know, I, you put these people on a pedestal because of what they are and what they've done and you respect um, because it's like, even if someone is a jerk or just is like not what you thought they'd be yeah, uh, for better or worse, you have to respect what they are in relation to what you are and not so much to compare yourself to other people, but you think about like, you know, if I've experienced all of these things, this dude's been at it for like another 10, yeah. yep. 15 years. He's got double my time in this, this world, in this, uh, thing, you know, he's balancing kids, he's balancing his wife, his mortgage, his other t two businesses, mm -hmm. whatever the hell that guy's got going on. Yeah. He's on his laptop all the time, wheeling and dealing, hopping on stage, like ripping the jit, like whatever, whatever that, that dude has to do that, mm -hmm. like gets him like still inspired to do the thing and, and go on tour and still make a bag, not be shot and uh, just maintain being a good person. It's like, you have to respect that. And even if my experience isn't like the best with somebody or like you just don't jive, it's like mm -hmm. I try not to take any of that stuff too personally. And I also try to separate uh, what someone has done from like who they are. Sure. Not not to say that you support somebody that is just trash, lies. Just, yeah. just straight up trash. But <laughs> yeah. um, being rude to me in the catering line is different than committing a crime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. like you're any weird social thing mm -hmm. here or there that maybe you perceive in some weird way it has no reflection on like what that person's character is, unless yeah. they actually do you dirty in some way. And then yeah. it's like, yeah, everybody's like, I think this whole like rant is kind of to say like everyone's entitled to their opinion on yeah. somebody. Um, and it can vary. Like you can have, you catch someone on a good day, you catch someone on a bad day. Yeah. So I never try to take any of those interactions to heart. You'll spend a month with someone on tour. You won't talk to them like one, like you talk to them maybe once or twice or mm -hmm. something and you just move on. Um, and then you still listen to their music and you don't care. Yeah. But, um, you know, or yeah, somebody can be a total jerk and you're like, wow, everything this guy does is cringe now. <laughs> like, As, that's, I feel like I it takes lose in my mind. I don't mind. know. And yeah. then, but everybody that I've met in, in a broad stroke has mm -hmm. been really cool and has been really like you, you're, you're with like your people, you're with kindred spirits, you're with people yeah. that have kind of been called to do a similar thing. And you all kind of have more in common than you have different. Yeah. So just try to find those things. And even if somebody is uh, a legend or they're just like in the, the band, that's like two bands under you mm -hmm. and, you know, they have a totally different life experience. They're in a totally different place and in their career, that that band's position in not in regard to like where they're at as a person, like everybody everybody just wants to be cool and to not have yeah. problems and to have a good time and make some memories and just enjoy their life. So like whatever that is, if you get along with someone or you don't, it yeah. doesn't really matter. All that to say, I think it's really cool when your friend puts something out yeah. and you know, that person intimately, you know, you know, that person's like life, you know, their history, you yep. know, their personality, you know, their yep. talent, you know, their drive, um, whether they're just having fun or they want to really make something of it, seeing your friends make music, mm -hmm. um, especially if it's like not a thing for them really, or they yeah. like, don't really do it like as like their career or whatever, like yep. stuff like that is awesome. And then I feel like yeah. I, I connect to that stuff a lot more than like another person maybe would because I I'm there invested in the story. 100%. Or you could be Dustin Kendrew who I would, I don't know what the hell I would do <laughs> if I met the guy. I feel like I would punish the hell out of him. Maybe I, I don't do that though. I don't do that. Yeah. I feel like I just wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, hi, love you. But you know, <laughs> Like, yeah. but I'll listen to that guy's music till the day I die. And yeah. it doesn't matter if I meet him or not, because that is that guy. That is that guy that is yeah. on that pedestal. You know what I mean? So yeah. I've had this strange kind of conflict as I become more aware of the inner workings of the industry. And again, I'm saying this knowing that you're infinitely more aware. But as we become more aware of managers and all the different stuff that goes into it, it's like, to some degree, I wish I didn't know how the sausage was made. To some degree, I wish I could just go back to being 16 and it's like, wow, look how cool this all is. And slowly as it becomes more more calculated and more, uh, I don't know, strategic and less organic. It's like, oh man, I wish there was some part of you I could flip back to that. And I, I think I'm always trying to balance that of like, I, 
I recognize the people on stage aren't superhuman and that makes it cooler that it's, it is a person, like you said, who's dealing with all the family stuff and all the normal human emotions and they're omitting that for an hour to give us something. And mm -hmm. that's really powerful. But I think I often catch myself trying to like see through that where I see them on stage and I go, half an hour ago, were you treating someone well? Because I don't think you were based on what I think I know about you. And it's hard to sing along, but I don't think you were treating people well a half an hour ago. Right. And sometimes that's all an act. You know, yeah. somebody goes up there, they look aggressive. They look like a jerk. You just take it some kind of way, but yeah. they're actually like the best and you meet them and they're just awesome and wholesome and cool. And they're, they're just looking out for people or they're, you know, they're just trying to live their life or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that guy gets off stage and goes, talks to his partner for, you know, an hour and a half or 20 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, or they just go and they like, just, they live their lives and yeah. they're normal. But yeah, for that time on stage, they're trying to do something. They're giving you a performance. A lot of times you go in kind of knowing what you're getting into, or you have like an expectation that it's going to be, uh, one way or another. And yeah. if your expectation is thrown off by seeing them, then yeah, that's where those weird feelings come into play. I feel like, but Far and away, most of the time that I'm seeing a band, I'm excited for it. They're out there. They're doing their thing. They're rocking, and they're sick, and I'm yeah. stoked. You appreciate more than anyone what it took for them to get on that stage and yeah. all the different hurdles they had to overcome along the way. And I think there's also a beauty. Sorry to interrupt you. I think the other beauty there is that like the there is some weeding out process that happens where it's like by the time a band is touring – they were at least kind enough and functional enough to survive their local scene. And I think mm -hmm. as you say, you do, that most people you encounter are good. It's like probably a lot of, a lot of other people who weren't as functional got weeded out along the way. Or there was some house of cards stuff going on oh, in the back, yeah. you know, they're wheeling and dealing, they're yeah. knocking people down, stealing this, stealing that, like, mm -hmm. you know, really like fighting their way up. But usually that yeah. stuff gets like, uh, they either shape their game up or they, they get, you know, found out. Yeah. And it unravels as quickly as it, it unravels. Yeah. It unravels yeah. like people that actually are not great, or at least people that don't really have the best intentions typically are not going to last. Cause they just get sniffed out. Like yeah. you can smell it on people. Um, yeah. you just, you know, when somebody doesn't want to be there, they're just phoning it in or they're not putting in the time or, um, and to be honest, a lot of that stuff doesn't matter unless you're like really critical of other people and judgmental. Yeah. Um, but like, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day where it all kind of what it is, is like if you're just like chill and you can like get through your day without being a total jerk to people consistently <laughs> and without yeah. fail, yeah. you you'll probably be fine, yep. you know? And there are people that just have a really hard time interfacing with other people. Like, you know, I feel like a lot of specifically this type of music or mm -hmm. just art in general, but like, yeah, heavy music, like um, you have a lot of people that just don't come from like this, the most safe backgrounds. They come from like, yeah. or if they do, they have like, just a lot of stuff going on in their brain. They're not really like built to just be like hanging out with people all yeah. day, every day. I'm Art like, and extroversion are not known to overlap. Right? No. And sometimes like, you know, I find that like, I'm pretty awkward. I'm shy. I don't sure. really like to like immediately be the guy that's like, hi, well, no. I feel like I'm just like putting my neck right out on the, uh, right out on the chopping block to just mm -hmm. get like, whatever, like roasted or to like mess something up or like trip over a word or like, you know, have that dip in the conversation where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to, I'm going to die of awkwardness. Mm -hmm. Like I'm ruining this. I'm butchering this. Like yeah. everybody's got that to yeah. some degree, some people worse yeah. than others. And sometimes that manifests into frustration or like, you know, completely not wanting to like interact with other people. And you know, if that's just what it is, that they don't have a social battery, it's like, whatever, as long as he's yeah. not like, being a jerk or trying to make other people's lives difficult or trying to yep. control other people's situations. Yep. That's the stuff that behind the scenes stuff. I feel like that is really like the bummer. It's when somebody is just actively trying to like make your life not as easy as it could be yeah. for like just no reason other than like their ego or just not really wanting to like put the effort in to like talk about things or communicate or like, you know, they don't have enough bandwidth to like accommodate you being there. Mm -hmm. Things like that. That's yeah. the stuff. And you know, this, there's like, yeah, the part of uh, what you were saying earlier where 
oh yeah, I don't really want to know how the sausage is baked. Yeah, yeah. it's like the yeah the like the industry like politics, the uh, you know the the backstage politics, yeah. the stuff like that, which yeah. usually is never a problem. I feel like everything is pretty chill for the most part. But when that stuff happens, and it happens at different levels, and there's different yeah. uh, intensities of it, but yeah, that stuff can really like burn people out. I feel like yeah, and it's a workplace ultimately, and you're gonna have people who love their jobs and people who <laughs> fall short of that. Sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. just want the people that know it's a workplace and and treat it the way that it should be treated. Yeah, and. That's really just, you know, people that keep it chill and professional. That's where you want to be. Hell yeah. Uh, we touched a little bit earlier on it, uh, but being present in the moment has been something that I've been trying to really take in. And as yeah, as I'm traveling, I'm trying to really make sure I take a deep breath and go, damn, it's cool that I'm here. It's, it's incredible that I've made it this far and I hope I keep going further, but it's incredible at least that I'm here. Uh, how are you trying to like, keep that in mind as you're touring and traveling? Like, what are you doing to actively kind of remind yourself like, hey, this is cool. It's not just an early wake up call tomorrow. It's not just a long travel. Like, what are you doing to t actually take a deep breath and smell the roses along the way? Yeah, it's just trying to get for me, like, yeah, talking about introversion and stuff mm -hmm. like that. For me, it's getting a little bit of alone time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, obviously, like, I don't know. I feel like our band gets along really well, like better than other bands, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, but we we try to like everybody needs their alone time at some point. You know, you're literally like next to each other crammed in all the time. So everybody kind of takes their moments to go do whatever they want to do, whether it's like, oh, I'm going to go like met, I'm going to go like do this workout or I'm going to go on this walk or I'm going to go to the store and buy a bunch of Pokemon cards, like whatever, <laughs> whatever it is that each respective person mm -hmm. in the band yeah. will do to kind of like, you know, get their time or have a thing that, you know, like we'll, we'll always try to have some family dinners or we'll mm -hmm. try to include each other on like the things that we like and, and things like that. But, um, yeah, for me, it's getting a little bit of alone time, getting to like see some sights, just be other places. I think the most important thing about getting to travel is like you don't get to see a lot of stuff, but you should you should take some time everywhere you go, wander to a, a street that you haven't been to. Uh, there's something cool in the distance. Let me go walk to yeah. that. You know, let me go get a burger and a beer at this this bar and just chill here mm -hmm. and just like embrace this moment being by myself somewhere. I would not be if I was not doing this. And yeah. that makes those strenuous, like, oh, 5 a.m. wake up. Um, oh, yeah. where you have to drive across the country. <laughs> oh, we have Again. to, um, oh, it's 4 a.m. It's my turn to drive. Just yeah. <laughs> whatever it is, you know, or 3.30 a.m., 3.15. That's like the worst time That's right the one. there. That's the one. That kills me. You wake up, it's 3 in the morning. You just finished. You, you went to bed like two hours ago. It's like, all right, dude, your turn. And you're like, Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Yep. Yep. It must that be is... nice in Europe that you guys can't legally drive, so someone else has to do it for you. I think you can. can I think you, you can. Oh. Yeah. So oh, okay. I, uh, well, I hope you can. I've done it. <laughs> I thought it was all other side of the road. I thought you were all in. Oh, UK? Yeah. That's the other side of the road. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Australia's the other side of the road, too. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Germany, we, uh, short story, we rented a car. <laughs> We were there a few days early because we went straight from Australia to Europe. And that, this was last year um, mm -hmm. going from Silent Planet Australia to Never Say Die yeah. in Europe. And it was a five-day stretch. Do we go home or do we just go straight there and just chill in Germany for like, I don't know, like a little less than a week? So we did that, rented a car. My girlfriend came out. Um, we all just chilled for, I don't know, a little bit. Went to Amsterdam. I drove the rental car. You know, we all we all pulled up to Amsterdam in the That's rental cool. and uh, chilled for the day. And yeah, I don't know, like just just doing like the little dumb stuff like that and just yeah. having fun, like driving around in Colorado in the mountains with the creeks and just like, oh man, there's just the things, just the things you get to see and experience and just live through, like just those little moments. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that you you just take away from it. Yeah. That's beautiful. I think it's a good reminder for me as well that, yeah, sometimes it's it's the creek you see that is almost as impactful as all the other crazy stuff going on through the day. Yeah, stop uh, and see the thing, yeah. you know? 
Are there are there compliments that still resonate with you? So as I was going through, uh, as I'm looking at currents, it feels like there's as you're talking about the the size of the audience. It's like there is so much uh, affection being poured towards you guys, and that's all great. Like it, it is a, an incredible problem to have. Um, I think the I think if I was in your shoes, I would almost become desensitized to it, and it would be very hard to internalize support from someone. And I guess maybe you would look to the people you admire for support. So when your favorite band or someone says, you know, great record that resonates, but like, is, is there anything that can get through to you as like a compliment or is it all kind of tough to soak it and really appreciate because it's comp common? Yeah. It's really just, you know, validation from peers is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that is, that is a lot of fun to have the mutual validation and the mutual respect of people that are like, you know, that you look up to or that you, are you know rooting for or yeah. people that are like kind of doing the same thing as you just doing the grind and you're at different places and stuff it's like um yeah i'm i'm trying to like keep in touch with some of these dudes and um or you know just a lot of these people in general and you know have that keep those connections going because that that stuff is really cool where you know you that is a good point it's like you have a fan or like a, a person or whoever or like a family member or like somebody comes up and says, Oh, Hey, I really like your thing. It is. It's hard to not be like, at all. Yeah. It, it's yeah. And it's like, it's hard to, to be genuine and have a, a genuine, like, Oh, like, thank you. Because it is, it's like, yeah. um, you, you do, you, you hear it a lot. Not to say that it's like, Oh wow. Like everybody's like, you know, I have trouble with it. Everybody right. loses all the time. It's like that's not true at all. Yeah. But when you're um, at the merch tent and people are yeah lined up, it's like that you you would hear those sentiments frequently. Yeah, and it's but it's it's awesome, and it's like you you know it's like you have to accept that, and you have to like force yourself to like accept it and just be like thank you, like I, I really appreciate it. But I like to try to like if I have time, like. I want to kind of dig a little more and be like, well, what's your story? Like, what do you, what do you do? Like whatever. And then like, we kind of know each other a little better. I know them a little better or like, um, you know, I, I want to get more out of that interaction if That's I can, interesting. Yeah. you know, like, it also helps. I assume uh, if someone comes up to me and says, you know, this song helped me get through this thing mm -hmm. is one thing, but if they then follow it up with, and here's a little bit more about that thing, then it's a much more impactful statement up front. Whereas just, instead of seeming like a casual thing, now it's a very real thing. You connect to the person and now you can really connect to the thing the person got through, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you can, and the, the hour long conversation of like this thing, sometimes it's like, you know, people will like trauma dump and stuff like that. And yeah. it's like, Hey, like some it, it, people don't realize that it's like, you it's know, a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. So, you know, you just respect it and, yeah. you know, you listen and, and just be a person and just like, you know, like I, I'm, of the mindset of like, regardless of what somebody's saying, like if you don't have the time to give people that like clearly think a lot of you, then like, it's just not going to go well for you. Yep. Um, so you need like, whether you can like put a game face on and be like, Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It's mm -hmm. like, be, be a real person in that moment and be in that moment, literally like what you were just talking about. And it's like, even if we're desensitized, like, like if a band guy is like desensitized to people giving them compliments, it's like, it's understandable, but you need to like be the step above that mm -hmm. and like either get more out of the interaction or like just, I don't know, like give people your time and just take it and you move on. Well, as I say, I think it's also probably tough because as they're saying, uh, right, we're talking about how the mental health kind of fluctuates over the tour. And I think that's part of it is that when they're saying great job and you believe great job, it's a lot easier to internalize than when you believe that things aren't going great or don't feel like things are going great. And someone says, you're the best. And you go, thank you. And on the inside, you're going, I'm the worst. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, dude. I yeah, I'm like somebody's like, great job. It makes me feel good that like it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It wasn't as bad as I thought because this person, whether they're being nice or not, that's the other thing too. It's a, sometimes I feel like people will say things like that. It's just like an opener and they don't really have, like, they yep. don't know what else to say. Yep. So then like that, that I think leads to the, uh, you know, the meme of like great set, bro. Like, yeah, it just, it just adds to that pile. So again, it's like, it depends if the, if the person is really genuine, 
that reads mm -hmm. and and you're gonna intrinsically want more out of that but if someone's just being like oh great set dude and you're like oh thanks dude it's basically just like hey how you doing good how are you like yeah you know and yeah. that's it's whatever but um there's also the times of course where somebody is really brief sees you for a second in the wild walks up goes Hey, I love you. This thing really important to me. Okay, bye. And they walk away, and you're like, "Wait, come back." Yeah, wait, well, you're sure, cool. I'm sure it's also like the the double. At, uh, what's the thing I'm looking for? Like the the backhanded compliments kind of thing of like the new record's great. I'm so glad you stopped blah 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 from the old record or whatever those yeah. weird things. Where oh, you gotta thank say, God, you're so much better than you were. Like, <laughs> those, <"What>? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's that's gonna crazy. tell me when I'm doing it wrong yeah. when I'm doing it. Like, ah, uh, that's the stuff that makes me annoyed. But yeah, it's also like, <laughs> yep, like somebody will say something like that, but you just read the tone and you just have to be like, they didn't mean it. They didn't of mean course. it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, <laughs> they've had a couple extra drinks. They were just laughing. Their oh, friend, like yeah. they're not alcohol, registering man. what they're alcohol saying. Alcohol yeah. is the oh god. Yeah, I. It's a lot of fun, right? But like. When you're not on the same level and somebody's just coming at you with that, oh yeah, that Long Island iced tea energy, <laughs> that four loco energy, yep. and they're grabbing you and they're like being like, oh god, and I tell you the same thing ten times, you're like, yep. oh no. Yep. <laughs> but, I've I've heard the other vocalists describe that like you're in this tough place where it's like you're different than the rest of the band that you because you're the the mouthpiece of the band you become like a physical representation of what the band has done so when they're grabbing you they're grabbing onto like the memories the good things currents has made them feel and you're the physical representation of that but they're almost forgetting that you're also a human who is uncomfortable and being grabbed at the moment yeah or you have to take the uh you you, you take the you're the guy you're the guy that yeah. like like For better or worse not, and that's not that's not to say like any any indication of like a, a importance of any kind it's more just like it's recognition um, it's yeah it's it's like the facial recognition it's the mm -hmm. the voice recognition it's the uh the guy wrote the lyrics he's the one talking like i yeah. i have a more of a sense of what this guy's vibe is probably going to be mm -hmm. than i do with everybody else so it breaks right. a little bit of ice for them in a way it's like hey i hey nice to meet you oh i know you already kind of vibe so i can guess your personality better than i could guess wiseman's or chris Polgarin. like it's as i don't know how to convert bass into human yeah when I hear well lyrics. he's got that like he is just exuberant he of is, course yeah, yeah he is just uh i mean you've known him for years it's sickeningly like outgoing here too, yeah. like yeah. yeah just the best like Honestly, yeah. like just a very accessible person, yep. very like um, open, very like, you know, like well, well put together socially <laughs> and can like really can talk to anybody, can hit yep. it off with anybody. We'll give everybody the time of day. He is he is the best. Honestly, shout out Chris. Shout and out <laughs> Paul Garen. How Chris do you guys separate that on tour? The two Chris's. Um, so we like to call Christian chin or I'll just call him Christian. Um, I always knew him as Chris growing up. And then once we like started being in a band together and there's two Chris's, um, there can only be one, right? <laughs> so I used to call him Chris. Now I call him Christian or I call him chin. And then, uh, Chris is either, uh, Wiseman to some people. They'll be like, Oh, where's Wiseman? We just mm -hmm. call him Chris. Um, but yeah, he is he is Chris or Chiz. He hates that. But <laughs> good thing to air out publicly then. We'll make sure he hears man. more about that. Oh, yeah. He hates it. Don't call him it. Uh we are just about coming to our hour here. So I'll yeah, do another moment or two and then wrap up. Uh one last thing I wanted to touch on is like uh the idea of still practicing and learning. So as I get more time, spend more time doing video, uh, I find it harder for me to sit down on a Sunday afternoon and go, this is the thing I need to work on today and I'm not getting paid for it. There's no reward for it. It's not going into a project. I just need to practice this thing. And I'm, uh, I used to be a lot better at doing that. And now that there's more client projects, more stuff that I'm supposed to be doing, it's harder to sit down and just do this thing. Cause I know it's the next step. I assume with vocals, there's a similar thing where it, uh, in my brain, it sounds like you've reached your voice. And I think you would probably say that you're still looking for 10% here or try to get the low, even lower or whatever that optimization process is like, yeah, are you still practicing? And I guess, what does that practice look like? How are you trying to get better? Yeah, my practice is doing it for the most part. Yeah. Um, I spend a lot of time doing vocals when we're on tour, obviously. Yep. We're sound checking. Uh, not not as much lately. It depends on where you are in the bill and yep. what 
technology you have available <laughs> and, and things like that because they got the virtual sound check now or in the future you That's don't wild not everybody yeah. depending on the board you have if you've got somebody who's locked in got like a nice new board um you have the virtual sound check so they can sound check with your audio from you know a like couple shows night, ago right? or yeah. whatever and it's cool because you get to hear yourself that's so crazy. like it's yeah, yeah it's kind of trippy but um i've walked into it and seen that happening and had a moment of like what the fuck you're is like this? wait is the whole band fake is it yeah. a back oh no but <laughs> yeah. i i literally i thought a whole i didn't know what it was like years ago mm -hmm. And I, I was like working a show and I was watching this band sound check, but I was like, wait, none of them are on stage. <laughs> oh my God, the whole thing's fake. And I, I was like, oh no. And then I realized now, uh, um, yeah. okay, yeah. it wasn't. It's just technology is a crazy it's thing. It's wild. Yeah. They are doing it. <laughs> you know, it's just how they get all the levels right. Yep. But yeah, trippy stuff. The future, <laughs> man, the future. But yeah, um, yeah, Still a lot practicing. of it's just doing it. A lot of it's mm -hmm. just doing it. Is there, are you still uh, pursuing YouTube tutorials? I know Melissa Cross is the hot name that everyone, or from my perspective, it seems like everyone seems to go to. Are you still interested in lessons? Are you still interested in seeking kind of outside support? Or is it really just you feel like you've done it enough that you can, yeah, kind of tweak and optimize yourself from within? There is a lot of that, but I think that's my arc now. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be looking more to like uh, self improvement of, you know, hitting the gym more, um, maybe finding somebody that I can bounce some stuff off of a little bit. Um, not to be like going to, a, uh, I mean, depend whatever it is, whether it's like going to somebody and just running scales mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, until I throw up mm -hmm. or it's, um, just trying to like find somebody to bounce some ideas off of, yeah. get some little technique tweaks here and there, stuff like that to get, you know, get drive that, you know, we we're talking about 10%. I'm looking for another like 30 percent um i like that so it's but it's ambitious but um you know i feel like i've already built so much i've spent so much time tinkering and learning things myself and mm -hmm. um getting little bits of advice here and there but yeah like i'll i'll have like a stretch every couple years where i will find somebody to kind of teach me more things or, or kind of change my understanding or at least challenge my perception of of how things are supposed to work and then and then take that and, and bring it into the next thing i'm trying to learn new techniques i'm trying to like uh do different things that maybe weren't my experience learning but i'm trying to like understand them at the very least now like i've been pretty obsessed with fries okay because even if i never use one ever again i want to understand it so that it is a thing mm -hmm. that's just in the arsenal and it gets me better at however that how i do it now i in uh, photo to me i've done weddings in the past and to me it's a similar jump where it's like a wedding and a concert aren't the same but there is some piece of doing a wedding that will help me and i don't know where that overlap will be and it sounds like you're saying a similar thing with a fry it's like even if i never do a fry again like just understanding how to use my vocal cords in that way will translate somehow and help come back around is that like a fair analogy? yeah yeah or just trying to find that thing that i can do or that i do that's simple or at least manageable for me that no one else is doing like yeah not so much just to be different but like trying to build on what has been going on and build on on the sound that we have but you know we'll see or maybe it's just using different ranges stuff like that maybe it's another project where i can just put out some weird crazy stuff that doesn't really have much to do with currents but just kind of changes um it sounds my like you're technique a little bit there. i don't know <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll see it's all it's all like from this two months ish i mean we have shows in between mm -hmm. and then um from now until europe also kind of using those shows to like you know try try some things out it's it's a little bit of a heavier set so yeah. we'll get to uh you know, I, I get to just be like a little down and dirty kind of. So that'll be cool. I have a little bit more fun with things and yep. be creative. But do your best Lorna Shore impression and see how it goes. Oh, my God. No, no, no. I couldn't. <laughs> couldn't possibly. Couldn't possibly. That'll be a fun set to watch every day. <laughs> what, a, what a luxury that is, man. Um, hell yeah, dude. Mission accomplished here. I think we just about did it. Yeah, we're just about past our hour. Um, before we get you out of here, where can people find you on social media? What should people look for? Yeah. What's coming up? I am at Brian Willie on most things. We're Currents CT as a band on 
X. Um, or <laughs> still Twitter, don't worry. We got yeah on Twitter. We got currents, just nice, easy, even currents on Instagram. Hell yeah. Uh, bless, however that happened, and I think it's the yeah it's the same pretty much everywhere else. It's like either currents official, current CT, or just currents. Um, yeah, we're mostly active on Instagram. I'd say we'll post some stuff on Facebook. Um, we haven't figured out TikTok really, but maybe we'll get there. <laughs> what, what a wild a, west that is. How are we going to post on TikTok? I don't know. I don't know, but I, <laughs> I'm i with you in that same, but I feel like every second I'm not investing in TikTok is a wasted second that I'm missing out on huge returns. Yeah, you're yeah you're missing out on the internet hype. It's it's pain, but it's also it like... It's selling tickets. <laughs> I, I I will I will accept that we are we are missing out on, on something to make it not something that just sucks. It also has to be real. Shilly, yeah. you know. Yeah. So we'll, we'll yeah. get there one of these days when yeah. we get our stride. I think it's a personality thing, too. It's like, how much of a personality we really want to have out there? Or do we just want to do our thing? And yeah. um, I feel like I would recommend everybody do TikTok uh, if you if you can. And it's something that comes naturally to you. But yeah. we, we kind of we got lucky, I would say, in a sense, where like we, we built a pretty decent following without it and before it so like yep we, we got a little bit of grace there we got you know but but we'll figure it out we'll, we'll get we'll get more on, on the things we just got to find yeah. our way you know yep. i feel you yeah i think my my lesson my thought to myself is always just like I don't know, how long am i going to wait like at some point it's worth just hopping on and finding out and if in six months i don't like it then fuck it but it's worth worth doing the experiment at some point exactly um, We'll figure it out. Hell yeah, man. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, yeah, Kern's everywhere. We got the holiday shows coming up and then Europe coming up. Social media. Have fun. Awesome. Something from everyone. Episode 47, Brian Willie. Thank you, my man. Gotcha.